currently 5 a.m. I haven't been to the gym in the morning in like two years now, so we'll see how this goes. I might try lifting a little bit more today. What's up, guys? So look at this. Look at this. I am lifting. Granted, it's a lot less than I was when I got injured, but I am lifting. I was able to get in the gym and actually do some weights this week, and I could not be more excited. I just have to make sure and take it easy, not put too much strain on myself because I tend to go too hard too quickly when it comes to coming back from injury. So um, I just kind of go in looking to do five exercise, four or five exercises. And I've been doing three sets of, I think, uh, 10 to 12 reps of each thing random things. So it's been a couple full body workouts. And then I took Wednesday to just do cardio and I rested from everything else because I actually did some light training Monday and Tuesday. But as you guys saw, squat and bench, I have not deadlifted yet. I'm still a little cautious about the pulling motion of deadlifting, but all of these exercises here felt just fine. Like I said, I just had to be careful about the weight and make sure that my form was perfect that I wasn't um, swaying or you know swinging or pulling my neck straining my neck in any way I did try to do a couple pull-ups and there was too much strain on the neck so climbing is still definitely out of the question and I was feeling so good that I threw in three count them three sprints on the treadmill and this was still a lot slower than I normally sprint at but it's better than nothing so I'm just so excited hoping that this is the beginning of the comeback guys so enjoy the Q&A That was actually really, really nice. Whenever Matt and I live a little bit closer to the gym, whenever we're at Matt's parents' land, I'm gonna start coming in in the mornings again. It's so nice to just get it done early. And then whenever, basically time to like start working and get the client emails, I'm not already like two hours behind as I normally am, so. All right, now that you guys are updated on my workout and injury situation, let's get to this week's Q&A. Did you stop exercising at all to get your period back? And what does your training look like after you've started menstruating? So I did do several videos. It was almost a year ago that I took the time to get my hormones back and check my menstrual cycle. But long story short, my hormones were completely thrown out of whack from years of dieting and years of restriction. I've been on as many diets as you can name over the course of basically my lifetime. Since the eighth grade, I've been dieting of some form or fashion. And then I went into my first bodybuilding prep in 2014. That's when I initially lost my period consistently. It was inconsistent to begin with, I guess, because of so much dieting and, and my weight fluctuations over the years. Went through my first prep. I didn't have enough time. I didn't give my body enough time to recover. And I did not have it for two years. I know that this is so different from person to person. I did have to take a good amount of time off of lifting, lifting heavy, lifting intensely. Um, I still climbed here and there, didn't do any extra cardio. I limited my activity pretty heavily. I didn't do, I, I might have worked out once or twice a week. There was a period of probably three to four weeks that I didn't work out at all. Climbing, I took it easy. So I did pretty much stop exercising uh, during this time and I ate a lot. Since I have gotten my period back, I slowly eased back into lifting. I slowly started adding cardio in, but any time that my period is late, that my cycle is late, I back off. I have not lost it again. Everything is back in normal working order as far as I can tell. Tips on staying on track with eating healthy when you are surrounded by lots of free food at work that are trigger foods for you. Work. The workplace can be very, very difficult to deal with whenever you have specific goals, when you're trying to eat a certain way, especially whenever nobody around you is doing the same thing. I have worked at several places where nobody eats mindfully, I guess is the way to say it. Again, who am I to judge what somebody eats? My recommendation for you, <laughs> this is probably gonna be a little different than what you're gonna hear from anybody else. My recommendation for you is to stop restricting those foods in the first place. Chances are the reason why those foods are trigger foods for you are because they are restricted in some way, shape, or form. So whether you tell yourself you can't have them at all, 
whether you tell yourself that you can only have them once a week, once a month. Coming from my own experience, my trigger foods used to be things like ice cream, cereal, Oreos, basically any sweets, any sweets that would be deemed as bad foods. Cereal specifically because I wouldn't be able to eat cereal without eating the whole box at one time. And the reason why those foods were trigger foods for me is because I set them on that pedestal of telling myself that they were bad, that I couldn't have them, that I restricted them from my diet so that whenever I was around them or whenever I did have some, I couldn't stop myself at one serving. A lot of the time, taking those restrictions off of those foods in general, they become less powerful in your mind. Uh, so that whenever you do, say you do stop limiting those and you stop restricting those foods, when you do go into work and they have donuts sitting on the table, it's not that big of a deal to you because you know that you can have it if you really want one. If you want a donut, have one donut. Don't focus your whole day around trying to avoid that food. Don't put all of your willpower into trying to stop thinking about the food because that's all you're gonna think about. My recommendation would be to slowly introduce those foods into your diet if it is something that you enjoy. Let's take donuts, for example. If you really, really enjoy donuts, why restrict them from yourself? All you're gonna do is spend your time thinking about donuts, dreaming about donuts, binging on donuts. I promise that one donut will not make you fat, just like one salad will not make you skinny. <laughs> have, have a few bites of donuts a day if that's what it takes. It's gonna take some willpower and it's gonna be weird to think about, but over time, you're gonna realize that donuts aren't that special. It's not this magical food that makes you happy. It's just something that used to, you used to restrict. And for whatever reason, it became that much more enticing because it was off limits, because it was forbidden. By slowly introducing those foods back into your diet, they become less of a big deal to you. I promise, I, again, I know it sounds weird, but I promise in the long run, it's going to make so much more of a difference to your mental health and your ability to truly find out if you want those foods or not whenever people have them at work. I have a standing job and I work out 30 minutes a day, five times per week. Three days I do Pilates, two days I do HIT. I eat about 1,700 to 1,800 calories a day, but I don't see any progress in weight loss despite the deficit. Why does this happen? Numbers. Talking numbers, of course, is so specific person to person, so I'm not even gonna think about your calories. I can't speak to this person's specific metabolism. I don't know your diet history. I don't know your workout history. I don't know hormones, your body's specific needs. Odds are you've been dieting for a while. Chances are you've been yo-yo dieting. Correct me if I'm wrong. I would encourage you to focus on more than just the scale. First of all, get rid of the scale. It does not tell you true health. Um, your body composition could be changing as is, but the scale might not indicate that. Honestly, I weigh the same as I did five, six years ago, but my body composition and my body fat and where I store my fat is completely different. So you can't only focus on the scale. I would recommend getting into strength training if possible, help increase your resting metabolic rate so you're gonna be burning more calories throughout the day even when you're not exercising versus something like cardio that does burn calories and hit cardio. You could possibly build some muscle but not as optimally and not as quickly as strength training. Another thing would be you might not actually be eating enough. As weird as it sounds, our bodies are very, very smart. <laughs> they are designed to survive. And if we're in a constant state of deprivation, if we're slowly starving our body long-term, which is dieting, it's slowly starving your body, then our body's gonna fight back. And if it sees that it's always in a state of starvation, if it's never getting enough calories for normal day-to-day -day functions, it's gonna start storing fat instead of burning fat. So I would recommend looking into um, how to optimize your metabolism through reverse dieting and strength training. Slowly start working on that process and focus on your whole health versus just the scale. 
Hi, Bryce Buzz. It's really hard to set your goal of fat loss aside for the sake of your mental health and your metabolic health, but five years from now, you will be so glad that you took this time. If you take some time to slowly build up your metabolism, focus on strength training, on building some lean muscle, and increasing your resting metabolic rate, weight loss, fat loss in the future will be so much easier. Uh, it, it can actually come more naturally. As your lean body mass increases and as you slowly start to eat more, you might lose body fat that way. You could just be hitting a plateau. As with any process of dieting or cutting, our metabolism adapts to the form of slow starvation. When this happens, you would need to either decrease your calories or increase your activity level, but I would not necessarily recommend it, um, honestly, to many people, unless you have a specific goal of competing or having to get really, really lean. I'm more about the long-term aspect, that lifestyle aspect of this. And if you're already struggling with the calories and the workouts that you're already at, it might be time to focus on increasing your metabolic rate with reverse dieting. And like I said, increasing your metabolic capacity with strength training. That's usually what I recommend to starting clients, to most clients in general, uh, because dieting is temporary. And when the diet fails, what are you gonna fall back on? If you have a high metabolic rate uh, through lean muscle and a good sufficient caloric intake, fat loss is essentially pretty easy, but it's all about that setup process. So I would recommend looking into reverse dieting, giving it a go for several weeks, several months, seeing how you feel and then reevaluating from there. There's always time to focus on fat loss and weight loss, but your metabolism and your mental health and your relationship with food is not always going to be there. So focus on that as much as you can when you can. I hope that helps. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today's Q&A. Thank you so much to those great questions that you guys sent in. Make sure to leave questions below. I have been getting a few regarding our travel, so I'm logging those away so Matt and I can answer those together. Fingers crossed that, actually, when you're watching this video, fingers crossed that we are getting our trailer today. Please, please. <laughs> we really cannot wait to be in this trailer, but like I said, leave your questions down below for next Friday's Q&A. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up if you do find these Q&As helpful, informative, entertaining, anything of that sort. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next video.